How's she going, my son? And welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. We have to write our first poem. Thankfully, as I mentioned in the previous episode, we do not have to write an entire poem. Instead, what we do is simply pick a selection of words, and each word keys to one of the girls. Although you will notice that Monica is not one of the selections, it's only the other three. Yuri, Natsuki, and Soyori. Er, so... Sayori. Sayori, yeah. I'm gonna flip through the book a little bit. I wonder if you can, like... Hmm, I'll check in a bit. Okay, so I want to... Interest... I'm interested in Yuri. And feel free to take that one out of context. But, um... I was actually doing... Uh, like, impressing her... In the file that's now lost. So I kind of just want to pick that up where I left off. So... Her words were... Like, horror, fantasy... And, like, a lot of the $5 words that are, like, really... Uh, complex got her to get her attention more. Uh, let's see. Horror makes her jump. Uh, Inferno? Yeah, there we go. Um, anxiety? Okay, yep. Okay, now it doesn't look like I can double back on choices, which makes sense. Disoriented? Here we go. I know Heaven Sent is one for her. There we go. Uh, tenacious? Yeah, yeah. Uncanny? Yep. Okay, we're doing good. We're doing good. Philosophy. Now, my first time... Uh, my first poem, I just picked random words and all the girl chibis jumped at random intervals. So, like, I, I think I got, like, a mixed answer on my first day. So, I am curious to see how the game handles it when I'm actually actively impressing one of the girls. Uh, da, 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 da. essence. There we go. Yep, yep. <laughs> Boop. That's a word. That that'd probably get Natsuki because hers, her her mo is like straightforward and cute, even if it has a deep message. So like boop would get her more than likely. Um, feather. Ah, that's a Sayori word. That's okay. One word won't uh, mess it up too badly. Secretive. Determination. Um, effulgent. There we go. Uh, extra ordinary. Ah, oh, no, I got Sayuri. That's okay. Uh, eternity. Yeah. Intellectual. Strawberry. Ah, that's a, that's not too key. Damn. Melancholy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, nightgown. Okay, that was not too key. Um, daydream. No. Crimson. There you go. Alright. Hi again, Mike. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last one to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Mike. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. So you already told me you didn't even want to join the clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you just plan to come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <laughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! <laughs> Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Mike always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Sayori, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Mike can become good friends too. Um... Sayori? Hmm? As usual, Sayori seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know? Wait, Sayori? Eh, me? Uh, um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? N never mind. Story made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, oh, what do I do? Eh? Uh, I'm sorry, Yuri, I wasn't thinking. I guess it means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. 
First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So it's an any nice gesture for me was a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. I, I, is that so? Yeah, I won't make a big deal if you don't want it to be. Uh, all right. Well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. Th this is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Y Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Whew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Siori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book she that she lent me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Ah. Uh, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me, and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Uh, sorry. I was just spacing out. I'm out of this sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh. It's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed it in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. I'm just curious. How come you have two copies of the same book? Ah. Well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday... Uh, that, that's not what I meant. Uh, I mean... I, I just happened to buy two of them. Ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I, I decide to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's it about, anyway? Well... Hmm. Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There is an ominous-looking eye symbol on the front cover. Uh, Alright. I just wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long-lost younger sister. But as soon as she does, her life gets really strange. She gets targeted by these people who escape from a human experiment prison. And while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up destroying most of her relationships, and her life starts to fall apart. That's kind of... that's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn, turn came out from nowhere. <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Mike? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy these kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into these things. She's so shy, shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that those kind of stories... They challenge you to look at life from a new, strange perspective. When horrible things happen not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals, or their own philosophy that they believe in, then suddenly when you thought you were related to the protagonist, they're made out to be the naive one of letting their one-sided morals interfere with the villain's plans. I I I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm so sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. W well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books or writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. Ah, that's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Y you don't have to. <laughs> what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put in my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the next seat next to Yuri's. Ah, y yeah. Uh, are you sure? 
You seem a little apprehensive. That's... Uh, I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri's in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. S sorry I, I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? Uh, I do? I, I didn't really mean to. S sorry I, I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. Oh my, how scandalous. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Shot for the, uh, title card. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're held a little even closer together than before. Oh my. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel- It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face, and she's in the corner of my vision. Uh, are you ready? Eh? T turn the page. Ah, oh, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, uh, that's okay. You're not used to- you're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Uh, yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it, uh, turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. Sorry about that, a little piece of junk I was playing with hit the, <laughs> hit the floor. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You, you think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of blunt in a lot of ways, but she also second guesses all the things she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see you in, into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of some of your mannerisms. Uh, I see. Ooh, pardon me. Yuri remains silent for a moment. But Mike, that's probably. A, a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. M wait, I didn't mean it in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really don't know you were self-conscious about that kind of thing. Uh, I guess I more meant it's kind of cute. Ah, what are you saying all of a sudden? I... Okay, everyone. Bleh. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah... Uh... Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kinda down. I'm sorry if I haven't I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, uh, it's not it's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. Alright. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. Alright. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Y yeah My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find this much, ins much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait! 
Sayuri and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Sayuri's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Atsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. Who should I show my poem to first? Alright, this will be a save point. Boop. I'll show it to Monica first. I should start with Monica. Yesterday she seemed eager to read my poem, and I wanted her to know I'm putting an effort. Sound logic. Hi, Mike. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good, glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Mike. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we're all learned to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Mm hmm. Great job, Mike. I was going, oh, in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easier for me to it's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. Again, why is this so relatable? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> that way it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayori, who likes simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers love to derive their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively. Both allowing people to get something out of it just by feel. Or letting them deeply analyze all of the nuances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kind of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone else wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, do you want me to read do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole and wall. It couldn't have been me. See, the direction the spackle protrudes? A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend? I'll never know. It wasn't I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas are already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. So, what do you think? Hmm. It's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Haha, <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, it's, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. Was that the... What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah. Well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that, because it's kind of... kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem, or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper, and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen on the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big, dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today.
Thanks for listening. Let's see what Soyuri has to say. This is a good poem, Mike. Are you sure it's your first time? Uh, of course. If it's not that good. Am I the kind of guy who would write, be writing poems in his spare time? <laughs> I guess you're right. But that's why he impressed me. Well, to be honest, I was afraid that you wouldn't do it seriously. Or that you wouldn't write one at all. I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really a part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm already standing in front of you in the club room. Er, well, of course. I'm not really into it yet, but it doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See? It's like I said before, Mike. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people. That's something only really good people do. Thanks, Sayori. I'm not sure if Sayori sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all? Yeah. And I'm gonna make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That'll be my way of thanking you. Alright, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay. Now, you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through my blinds in the morning makes me feel like you missed me. Kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a raining day? I look above, the sky is blue, it's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not mad. I want breakfast. Sayori, this is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? No. Just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least it makes me feel a little better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Ah, uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice, or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. R really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school. It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. Hehe. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica's the best. Ah, uh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Natsuki. Hmm? Mike, if you're not gonna take this club seriously, then go home. What? Harsh. What, you expect me to believe that you actually put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put in effort. We all start somewhere, right? If you're so proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Eh? Painful to think about? Fine. Well, sorry. You'll get better anyway. I'll I'd tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying again. Fair enough. Well, to each their own, I guess. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing you, you'll probably think it's stupid. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. Yeah. I told you you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because. Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make my, your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. Like, on more levels than you realize. But the other but the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like, I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her.
As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Eh? What was that? D did I say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. I... Ooh. He's going to hate me. Um... You really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Eh? That's... I, I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. So... What kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metamorph metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant, uh, um... Yuri tries off, unable to find an excuse. She traces a finger along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form-fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once she refines her train of thought, it's as if her demon- it's as- blah. It's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There's so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them, but building and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice, and learning by example, and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Azuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Uh, um... Well... Never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself, to me, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a, if, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining streetlight to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Calm. Breathing air of the pleasant, but of the present, but leaving it in the past. The light flicker. But living in the past, sorry. The light flickers. I flicker back. I'm sorry, I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. B but it took you a long time to read. Ah. Well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? Eh, uh, it's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short? I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? <laughs> Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Mike. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it, after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past. And soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. Whoops. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Eh? It's nothing, really. Yours was impressive, too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you think so? Yeah, of course. Ah, uh, you know, I was really nervous about doing all of this, but in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Mike. Ah, uh, me too. Whew. I guess that's everyone. I glanced around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. 
It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is, this is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Sayori and Monica are happily chatting. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the, to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is... cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about feeling a, the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I, I just meant... the language, I, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but I didn't really come... But it didn't really come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. Huh. If, if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Mike did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all... <coughs> uh, she says what I'm going to say. Excuse me. <laughs> Throat's a little dry. Excuse me, I appreciate the offer, but I've spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. <clears throat> and Mike liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? That's not what I... Ooh, you, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Mike appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Oh. Um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Mike started showing up. Th Natsuki! Oh, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you! I, I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned toward me, as if they just noticed I was standing there. Mike? She she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. If she could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective then this wouldn't have ever happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain that to her, Mike. Wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Mike? Um... Well... <laughs> I can't do two different voices at once. How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing, but whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So, of course that's going to be... I'll make a save here real quick. Bloop. Yuri. Natsuki, you're right that I liked your poem. See? Wait. That's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. You hear that, Internet? <laughs> you shouldn't pick a fight because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Hmm. I understand. Yuri. Eh? You're a seriously talented writer, so it's no secret that I was impressed. Well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it. And it becomes something really personal. That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. Uh, I see. I didn't notice that. I... I'm sorry. Ooh. But Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well, and if you just told her how you felt, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... 
Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said some things you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't you think you should too? <sighs> Natsuki clenches her fists. In the end, nobody has taken her side. She's trapped, at this point being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up even feeling bad for her. Um, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and uh, clear my head. Sayori, she doesn't need to... You know what? I'm gonna do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches her own poem up from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem in her hands and throws it in the trash. Natsuki, she really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in an adjacent chair. <sighs> Everything alright? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri! How could anyone have gotten frustrated? Oh, sorry. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, all right, I believe you. Thanks, Mike. You're too kind. I'm thankful to have you as a part of this club now. Er, it's nothing. One more thing. Um, that one thing that Natsuki said about, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. So, eh? What thing did Natsuki say? Um, well, never mind that. I'm going to go make some tea. Ah, good idea. Make enough for more than one person, okay? Y yeah. Okay, everyone. It's just about time for us to leave. How did you all feel about sharing poems? It was a lot of fun. Well, I'd say it was worth it. It was alright. Well, mostly. Mike, how about you? Yeah, I'd say the same. It was a neat thing to talk about with everyone. Awesome. In that case, we'll do the same thing tomorrow. And maybe you learn something from your friends, too. So your problems will turn out even better. I think to myself, did I, I did learn a little bit more about the kinds of poems everyone likes. With any luck, that means I can at least do a better job impressing those I want to impress. I nod to myself with newfound determination. Mike! Ready to walk home? Sure, let's go. Hehehe. <laughs> Sayori beams at me. It truly has been a while since Sayori and I have spent this much time together. I can't really say I'm not enjoying it either. Sayori, about what happened earlier. Eh, what do you mean? You know, between Yuri and Natsuki. Does that kind of thing happen often? No, no, no. That's really the first time I've seen them fight like that. I promise they're both wonderful people. You don't... you don't hate them, do you? No, I don't hate them. I just wanted your opinion, is all. I can see why they'd make good friends with you. Whew. You know, Mike, it's nice that I get to spend time with you in the club. But I think seeing you get along with everyone is what makes me the happiest. I think everyone really likes you, too. That's... <laughs> Every day is going to be so much fun. Ugh. It looks like Sayori still hasn't caught on to the kind of situation I'm in. Sure, being friends with everyone is nice, but... Does it really need to stop there? We'll just have to see what the future holds, Sayori. I pat Sayori on the shoulder. I said that more to myself than to her, but it's easy to use Sayori as an internal monologue sometimes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's do this. And we're at the second poem. So, this will be good. This is a good little cutoff point, as any. Now, I do want to mention something before I do, though. Since I have done a couple of days of the game, I noticed that I got an event on the first day that I got on the second day, the thing where we were reading, like, super close with Yuri. Um, I actually got that on the second day on my first playthrough. On the first playthrough, I ended up getting an event with uh, Sayori instead, where, you know, she... Uh, we were walking home and topic of discussion came up. I uh, don't remember. I don't remember it off the top of my head. But anyway, so it looks like this game has a lot of little like interlocking pieces that get determined by your both by just your progress through the days, but also what you actually write your poems about, which is interesting. Because I mean, a lot of people can think a narrative game doesn't have a lot of mechanics to it, but as proven by something like this. You could actually get a lot of mechanics in a game that isn't about, you know, killing things with numbers, basically. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. 
Uh, if you like the video and you want to see more, and you want more people to see the video, give it a like. And uh, if you want to see the more video, more of my videos yourself, click on the subscribe button and hit the bell so that YouTube remembers to tell you that hey, Mike has done new stuff. Um, but anyway, Dokiyoki Literature Club, we are going to get our long-haired, shy, and beautiful waifu. Hopefully. Unless I fuck it up horribly along the way. We'll see. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and ciao for now.